How's it going everybody? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Today's video is going to talk about estimating numbers on pilot charts. So a lot of pilot calculations are used with charts and tables and a lot of the times you're going to have to estimate where the, the lines you draw on those charts, where they meet the axis and what numbers those are. Um, this might be intuitive to some people but I think it's worth it um, because you want to be there's a lot of user error that can happen and you want to make sure you're accurate uh, so that you get the closest answer. So like on the FAA written, as long as you're close, you, you can trust that the closest answer they'll they'll have, you know, in the multiple choice question is going to be, um, you're going to feel confident that that is the correct answer. <clears throat> so again, you're going to see these on the FAA written and you're going to have to use these charts. And it, again, it's easy for user error when getting numbers from charts. So it's important to make sure you take your time and use uh, the correct technique. So let's do an example. So using the chart below, determine the effect on density altitude that a temper temperature increase of 25 degrees Fahrenheit would have at an airport that is currently at 60 degrees Fahrenheit at a pressure altitude of 6,000 6, feet. So it's way up there. Um, so what would an increase of 25 degrees F be um, on the density altitude? So what we're being asked here is to find two different density altitudes. One at conditions of 60 degrees F and 6,000 feet, and then one 25 degrees more than that, or 85 degrees F and 6,000 feet. And then we'll see, we'll compare the two density altitudes and see what the effect of that 25 degree increase in temperature was. So again, we'll see what uh, what that does to the, our density altitude number. So we're gonna find two density altitudes and then compare them. So first let's find a density altitude at 60 degrees F and 6,000 feet. So we find 60 degrees F down here. We draw our line up until it meets this 6,000, sorry, 6,000 feet line of uh, altitude and where that intersection happens we draw a straight line to the left to this axis where we'll read off our density altitude. So now we can see that we our line we're going to get something that's between the seven and eight numbers. So it's not exactly seven and it's not exactly eight. So let's zoom in and let's we got to do our best at trying to guesstimate what value this would be. So uh, what we can do to get an accurate value is break down the vertical axis into more precise lines of measurements. In other words, we can mark more lines of our own. And we can start with this grid line that they give us that is right between seven and eight. So each, so there's two grid lines between each whole number. Okay, so at six there's a line, and then halfway between six and seven there's a line, then there's a line at seven, halfway between seven and eight there's a line. Okay. And so this num this line is seven and a half or 7,500 feet. So let's just write that into our chart. And so now what we know is we know that our blue line is between seven and a half and seven. That helps us a little bit. We know that it's not gonna be above seven and a half and it's not gonna be below seven. We've, we're more a little bit more precise than we were when we just knew it was between seven and eight. So uh, since there are no more, you know, line, grid lines, uh, now we just got to do our best to judge how far between seven and seven and a half our blue line is. Luckily, our blue line is pretty easy in this uh, example, and that it looks to be about half the distance between seven and seven and a half. It looks to be splitting right in the middle. Okay, so we know that it's fifty percent or a half of the way between 7,000 and 7,500. And we know that the, the difference between the 7,000 line and the 7,500 line is 500, okay? So, and we are 50% of that distance of 500. So between 7,000 and 7,500 is a distance of 500 density altitude, and we are right in the middle of that, okay? So 50% can be written as 0.5, as a decimal. And this is what we need it in a decimal form in our order to multiply. So if we wanna find half of 500, or 50% of 500, we do 0.5 times 500, and that gives us 250. 
Okay, so now we know that our blue line is 250 you know, units of density altitude above the 7,000 line. Okay, so now all we got to do is add 7,000 to 250 and we get 7,250. So our blue line is at 7,250. So this is the best way I have found uh, to estimate. You, you use as many lines as they give you to narrow it down and write in those numbers. And then once you've made it as precise as you can with the lines they've given you, then you estimate the best you can with your eyes and come up with a percentage um, in order to calculate you know what that number would be so let's do this again uh, let's repeat the process with 85 degrees fahrenheit and 6,000 feet so this is our second density altitude we want to come up with okay so we find 85 degrees down here we draw a straight line all the way up to the 6,000 line and then from that intersection point, we drive, draw a horizontal line over and uh, we read off our density altitude from the y-axis. So as you can see, uh, again, we are between the nine. And then if we write in our eight and a half line, which is on the grid line between eight and nine, we know that we're be our line, our green line is between the eight and a half and nine line. So if we zoom in again, we can see that it's not halfway like it was uh, in the previous example, but it's a, it's much closer to nine. Okay, now when I do this technique, when I'm saying, you know, before in the previous example, we said it was 50%, I use only five options. So of when I estimate, I use 20%. So I say, okay, this line is 20% above 8.5, or I use 25%, 50%, 75%, or 85%. Okay, so that's the same as saying one-fifth of the way from 8.5 to 9, one-fourth of the way from 8.5 to 9, one-half the way, three-quarters of the way, or four-fifths of the way. Those are the numbers I use. I find that going any more precise uh, is, is overkill and it'll just confuse you and make things harder for you. I find, so again, I find these as specific as you'll need uh, to get close enough to the answer on the FA written. Honestly, you might be able to be okay with just doing a quarter, a half, and three quarters, or 25%, 50%, 75%. That will probably get you close enough to get the correct answer. Okay, so out of my options, it looks like our green line is closest to, it's very close to nine. So the, the, the closest to 100% would be 80% or four fifths of the way between eight and nine. You could do 75%. Um, of the way, but it looks to be a little bit more than three-fourths of the way. Um, so I'm going to go with 80% of the way. So now we find out what 80% of the way correlates in terms of a density altitude. So again, because between 8.5 and 9 is 500 feet, we find out what 80% of 500 is. So we make 80% a decimal or 0.8 and then we multiply that by 500. So 0 0.8 times 500 gives us 400. So now we know that our green line is about 400 feet above the 8.5 line. So if we, all we have to do is add 400 to 8.5 or 400 to 8,500, and that gives us 8,900 feet. Okay. So in review, uh, going back to the example, uh, we found our first density altitude of 7,250 and our second one of 8,900. And to answer the question, how much would a temperature increase of 25 degrees impact the density altitude? Well, it would move it from 7,250 to 8,900. Or in other words, if we subtracted 8,900 to 7,250, it would increase it by 1,650 feet. So a 25 degree Fahrenheit increase would increase the density altitude 1,650 feet at a pressure altitude of 6,000 feet. Okay, so I hope you guys uh, learned a lot. Um, and if you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so already. And if you're not following me on Instagram, I got a lot of good tips and helpful information for pilots there. It's at part period time period pilot. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you guys later.